What's up guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a continuation of my attempts to rip J and rip GN and beat J's Two Cents and Gamer's Nexus at RTX 3090 SLI overclocking. Excellent! Team Group's Dark Z series of DDR4 gaming memory features an aggressive yet stylish armored design with high performance aluminum alloy heat sinks to keep thermals in check. The Dark Z series uses specially selected high quality modules to achieve DDR4 speeds up to 3600 with XMP 2.0 support for easy setup, and kits are available in capacities of up to 32 gigabytes per DIMM, perfect for a gaming PC or a high end workstation. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. I would like to humbly point out that I came out on top in round one, but uh, the limits there was air cooling or AC assisted air cooling, and now we've moved on to water cooling. This is an area where I've uh, done some work in before. I've definitely built some water cooled systems, but I don't think I have quite the array of products here in my garage that I'm gonna need in order to hack something onto these GPUs in the form of a water block. So first things first today, uh, I need some more help. Let's hit the road. So if you guys watched my last video, you might know that uh, I needed some PCI Express riser cables, some extensions. And I reached out on Twitter and a, a fan, Cole, contacted me and he was able to meet me up really quickly and get me that so I could get back to testing. I also hit up Thermaltake at the time. They also responded and offered me some riser cables. So I think I'm gonna take them up on that, but uh, you know, they also make some water cooling stuff. It's always convenient to live conveniently close to manufacturers. And look, it's Mike. Hi, Mike. Okay, bounced in and out of there pretty quick, but uh, here is what friends at Thermal take, uh, and a big thank you to Thermal Mike for meeting up with me and helping out, we're able to provide. We got, of course, the PCIe riser cables. These are the 300 millimeter variants, so they're a little bit longer than what I currently have. We got two of the Pacific W1 water blocks, and these are not the newer variants because the new stuff that they make has lots of RGB going on because uh, Thermaltech has lots of RGB stuff, but these are a little bit smaller, and they've got brackets that I think I might be able to either modify or work with in order to mount these onto the RTX 3090s. And then while I was there, I was like, oh yeah, Thermaltech's been doing a lot more memory stuff lately, so I was like, you guys got any fast memory around that I could take advantage of? And they were like, yes. So we have a DDR4 4600 kit right here from the Thermaltake Tough Ram RGB series. That's a 16 gig kit. And then uh, they also dropped a 4400 megahertz kit that's also two by 16. So I think I'll try the 4600 kit with two by eight at first. And then I don't think adding more memory is gonna help me out much with the tests we're running going from 16 to 32 gigs, but uh, I have that option with another set of fast memory too. All right, I'm gonna get some pet food and I'm gonna go home and start water cooling. All right, so benchmarking corner is still assembled over here. Here is the rig that won round one. Super awesome. I, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to take this all down because, you know, fond memories and everything. But there was even stuff here that I think I could have changed to maybe even improve my score a little bit more. Like, I still had hyper-threading on on my processor. I definitely should have turned that off. That might have helped scores a little bit. I feel like it also might have helped to have had an exhaust fan up here pulling air off of the cards as well as blowing the cool air onto the cards. But none of that matters too much now because we're moving on to water cooling and the fact fact is these air-cooled solutions on here are not going to be as efficient as water cooling. So I'm going to need to do a big reconfiguration of this area eventually with radiators and stuff like that, but uh, none of that is going to matter either unless I can actually put a water block on these cards. So I think first things first, got to pull the cards out and at least get one of them disassembled and see if I can figure that out. So there's our exposed GPU die, and you can see uh, there's a decent amount of area here around it for attaching potentially a block. It's just going to be a matter of can I line up these holes in some reasonably good way. There's a support bracket along here. I might remove that still, but for now I'm going to leave it on. Let's take a look at our Pacific W1 block though. I think one of the benefits of this one is that it's pretty compact for like a CPU block, so uh, might be a good solution. Perfect. So our goal is to take this uh, CPU water block and mount it to this GPU as tightly, as securely as we, we can, with emphasis being on downward pressure and contact between that flat plate on the bottom of the block and the actual contact with the GPU itself right there. This has Intel and A... I'm putting my hand in. 
Oops, I stuck my hand in thermal paste. Anyway, the, uh, this has Intel and AMD mounts, and I'm finding that the Intel mounts are probably the best as far as kind of lining up with those four holes there, but it's really just, it's not lining up properly the way it should. Or not the way it should, but this isn't a block that's designed for this application, but the way it would ideally, I was thinking, oh, if it was just a smaller X, I could just drill holes through like here, 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 and here, and be okay. But if I was doing that, I could maybe line up two here, but then like this one would be kind of weirdly offset, and kind of that one too. The way these hold down brackets it's on the blocker design though, uh, they pull out like that. And they're held on with these little plug screws that just drill in through the bottom. And that's actually kind of useful for me. Um, when you do it normally, it would go through these little holes and that would provide pretty good security. But what I'm looking at is just this channel through here, which is pretty much just a channel. So if I could get a piece of metal that was straight and sturdy enough and feed it through there, I could put those screws through here and kind of hold it down. Although I might need to cut them short depending on how far they protrude through there. But you can kind of see how if I did have a piece of metal going that way and it was sticking out enough here, I could just put the holes where I wanted to and probably get a pretty secure mount. And it just so happens that I have a fair amount of strips of metal that are about that wide, that are already kind of cut to size, that already kind of have gaps in them that I could put screws through. These are just PCI slot expansion covers, and uh, the only real downside to them is they are not the strongest. They, they do bend and flex a little bit if you put some pressure on them, so that's not the best. But I do have these as well, and these are, these are kind of bent a little bit differently, and they feel maybe like they're a little bit sturdier, so I've got a few options. And the nice thing about this is I've got multiples of them because uh, whatever I figure out for one side of this block I need to do on the other side and then I need to do on another block for that graphics card too. <laughs> Alright, so there's my uh, test assembly, which I'm actually feeling pretty positive about. Granted, it did add a little bit of angle uh, to those brackets, and I do have the option of like snipping the ends off, which I haven't done yet because I don't think it's conflicting with anything, and I'd rather not leave ragged med metal edges. But I do have tin snips and a rotary tool and stuff if that needs to happen. What I'm really happy about here is that these little uh, mounting screws are actually still pushing up, so they're not sticking out at all from this base plate, and that was going to be a concern because if they were, they might have conflicted with the edge of the GPU package here. But now I should be able to set that on there and I should have some amount of like ability to pass through screws through those holes. I took the fixed screws off of this back bracket so I can still use that. And uh, now I just gotta figure out screws that are the right length. These are the ones that came with the Pacific W1 water block. So I'm gonna see if those work first. So there's my test fit, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having fun with this. It's so hacked together, it's so jakey, but uh, it actually seems to be holding pretty well. The screws aren't able to go directly straight down, but they're able to line up enough that I can get all four of them through, and I've been able to tighten it down most of the way on the bottom, too. I haven't tightened it down all the way yet because I haven't put on any uh, thermal paste or anything like that, but I think this is working well enough that I can take the uh, shroud off of the other GPU, and I can try to get this set up with both of them and put thermal paste on it and everything, and then move forward with trying to get the rest of the loop going. So I had a long evening last night getting this all set up. I, I, I stayed up a little late. I did get everything up and running. It's not working right now because this is pretty loud with all the fans going, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the setup. I anticipated that my main dilemma was going to be getting the CPU blocks mounted to the GPUs in some sort of reasonable fashion, and I think that's actually been solved, I, I, I hope. In my initial tests, this top card was actually running cooler than the bottom card, and I think that's because it's been, it's been getting fed directly from uh, my radiator configuration over here, which is two really thick, I, I forget how thick, uh, alpha cool rads. And this is actually the setup from Riptide, which is why it has a bunch of Corsair RGB LED fans on this side. Getting all the fans hooked up in this rig was uh, sort of an interesting procedure. I actually went and fished out a bunch of these old adapters that I have, the Molex to uh, fan adapters. So if you plug these in, the fan's just gonna run at full speed. And since that's what I wanted, all I'm doing is routing uh, a Molex plug from the power supply 
daisy chained a bunch of those together and then plugged them all in. So I've been I've been saving these in a drawer for like years now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm finally justified in keeping all of those old fan adapters that I have. Also got a couple Noctua NF-812X25 fans, which are really nice. I'm probably gonna need to do some changing up with the uh, way I have these mounted because I just did, a, I've, I've used a lot of gaff tape in this setup, let's put it that way. And in fact, my feeder fan over here on this side has, has fallen down overnight, oops. But the fans here are trying to blow as much cool air over the GPUs as possible and since all of the cooling that's directly touching like the memory and stuff is no longer there and as Jay also warned me from his testing uh, keeping that memory cool is going to be pretty key and pretty important so initially I had this top fan set as like an exhaust to sort of pull the air up also I have the AC unit still although I haven't reconfigured the shroud but I was sticking that right up against this radiator unit to cool that down and that's been my plan for the whole time and uh, I didn't film any of this setup except for a little bit of filling the loop up I did have to take this pump and raise it up and s set it on top of a box because since I raised the radiator up so that the exhaust could be passing over the rest of the system I needed to make sure that this reservoir was above the level of the radiator otherwise as I was filling it it would, it would feed back out and, and overflow it. Ultimately though I didn't break any records last night and I didn't even break my own top score so I do still have some more work to do today. I, I think there's a few possible things that are causing issues. One might be the memory getting too hot and that's definitely a concern. I think my main concern is going to be this pump because this is actually the pump from the original Arctic Panther and I don't think it's fully functional anymore. I mean it's working but it's not doesn't seem to be working at full speed and I don't think it's generating enough pressure uh, to pass everything through this entire loop. I do have a couple quick disconnects here and here so that's actually going to be really, really helpful for me because that means I can disconnect this pump reservoir combo and then for now I'm going to replace it with this for some reason I don't have any stands for any of my pumps so they're all sort of sitting awkwardly on the table at weird angles for this one I fashioned a cardboard stand on the bottom and note that this pump still works and this is actually also part of Riptide along with that radiator setup right there so getting pieces of Riptide or the original Riptide back together and this actually ran the entire Riptide loop for the CPUs and GPUs for quite some time. So I'm hoping this still has enough life uh, for this system. Part of the reason I think that the pump needs to be swapped out is I did ran, run a little bit of a longer like stress test uh, with Firestrike. I was trying to maybe see if I could do some curing on the uh, thermal paste I put on the GPU blocks. And the temperatures were definitely getting higher than I was expecting up into the 60s uh, for the GPUs, which is higher than they should be. So I also have a possible need to do a remount on the blocks if it's really not secured on there tight enough. And I might even try swapping the cards because I I think I accidentally got them swapped when I was setting things up and my number one card is now in the number two slot and vice versa. And since I was getting such good scores with my initial air cooled setup, I kind of wanted to go back to that same exact configuration first just with water cooling and see what difference the water cooling made. Beyond that, my core system, the 10900K, is running at uh, between 5 and 5.4 gigahertz depending on how many cores. I still haven't turned hyper threading off there. The memory is running at DDR4 4000 cast latency 18. I could probably tighten those timings up a little bit, but I also have not plugged in this kit yet so that's another thing I can do. I do have a decent amount of time today so I'm just going to be trying out some of these different options and seeing what makes a difference. Swap to the new pump reservoir currently taped to the top of my RTX 2080 Ti box. I'm also reversing the flow of the loop so uh, the bottom card is going to get fed first and then to the top card just to see what change it makes and I think that'll better help me determine if there actually is a contact issue with the bottom card or if it's just being caused by the order of the loop. Blub, blub, blub. Oh yeah, this fitting's leaking too. Just sort of seeing what happens here, I've got my AC unit kind of at an angle, so it's feeding, I uh, cut a chunk out here so I could feed some of the air over the radiator through those fans, but some of the air is still being piped up here and going straight over the cards, and maybe that'll help out with the memory and the power delivery. It definitely does seem like this pump uh, unit is putting out a lot more uh, pressure, so that's good. I'm seeing a lot more movement in the tubing and everything, so time to give it a few more test runs and see if this helps. Also, I feel like at some point maybe I should hook up the RGB for these, these fans. Maybe if I need an extra edge later on, I'll do that. Okay, it's Wednesday now. Uh, this week has been a little bit challenging, but uh, on Monday I shot a video in the morning and then I went to thermal take and I got the blocks. On the afternoon I put the blocks on the GPUs. In the evening I set up the water cooling loop, found that it wasn't performing very well. Yesterday was Tuesday and I was supposed to do a lot of work 
work, but I didn't get very far, and uh, part of the reason is uh, this little one right back here. Yes, my sweet daughter Hannah was just not having any of it yesterday as I was trying to get work done. Fortunately though, today, she's heading to Grandma's house. All right, Hannah's dropped off. She's gonna have a great day today, but uh, also yesterday there were some other developments. For example, Jay posted his video, his most recent video with his RTX 3090 SLI overclocking attempts, and he spoke very highly of me. Like the level of mutual respect he has for like me and, and Steve and uh, and all that, and uh, I'm just kidding. No, he, he said that he was letting me participate in this competition and generally you know was a little bit of a dickhole and at first I was like uh why are you being such a dickhole, Jay? And then I realized, oh yeah, this is Jay we're talking about here and uh, staying classy has never really been his strong suit. More importantly though, I was able to analyze his methods and uh, that was actually pretty helpful. I wanted to point out that when I did this two years ago when the RTX 2080 Ti first launched, I was unprepared and I came into the air cooling phase unprepared and I managed to do okay, but by the time I did okay in air cooling, they had moved on to the water cooling and then eventually the LN2. This time, I was definitely more prepared for the air cooling phase when it comes to like, what's the best hardware I have and what can I put together to have a system that will compete in this test. But now that we're moving on to like fancy water cooling with stuff like ice baths and stuff, uh, I'm missing some equipment. So got to do some shopping here. All right, shopping is done. That was uh, pretty quick, fortunately. I already went to Walmart and then I had to swing by here. That's smart to grab these. I got out of Walmart as quickly as I possibly could, but let's take a look at my haul. Needed a big ice chest first of all, so got that. I was gonna go for one of the styrofoam ones, but they didn't have one that was big enough, so just went with this. We actually don't have a large ice chest, so this might be helpful in the future. There's a secret weapon in there too, maybe, that I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute if it works. Got some shop towels, need some more of those. Various types of tape. Definitely needed more duct tape. Somehow I was out of duct tape, and that's just unacceptable. Got some of the black version too. And then here from PetSmart, I got these, water pumps, because we're going with chilled water or ice water for the cooling and you need to circulate the water over the radiators. Nice thing about these is uh, I found them online and they were 23 bucks. In store they were like 55 or something, but they price match, so thanks. Thanks PetSmart. Okay, I'm back home to my uh, overclocking corner, which is getting more and more complicated and cluttered and everything, but that's okay. So here are the ingredients for what I'm trying to do. Got the AC, of course, and what I had attempted to set up was piping the AC through the radiator, uh, which was then hooked up to the GPUs, and then I was relying on that to continue the airflow over the GPUs here. Wasn't working out that great, and this is definitely something that I'm benefiting from seeing Jay's video on. I'm going to be using the AC to directly cool the cards and try to keep the memory and VRMs as cool as possible. The memory, I think, in particular was getting too hot because also similar to Jay, the memory was hitting uh, like, I think 1150 was the top I got it in my best run, but now with the cooler off, uh, it's only good enough to maybe five to 600 and, uh, and it's definitely not quite as stable above that. So cool air over the memory is going to be very helpful. I think I have confirmed that my GPU block mounting is actually pretty solid. Uh, after I switched to the new pump and I reversed the flow, both of them were sitting at about 19 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much ambient. It would get warmer than that, of course, when I was running tests and stuff but it does seem to indicate that uh, I've got a decent mount on both of those. At least I'm relying on that for the time being. So I think I can stick with this configuration as far as the pump. I am going to drain the entire loop so I can redo some tubing. I definitely need to do some longer tubing extensions to get down to the new ice chest down here. Here's our old ice chest. As you can see, it definitely would not have been big enough for this task. I did remember to pick up ice though. I made one last stop for that because uh, that would have been kind of silly if I had forgotten ice. We do have an ice maker, but it's not up to the task of filling this. And I think I might need to have extra ice on hand as well. Got the shop towels here. I'm gonna be using that along with the tape to maybe try to do some insulation on some of the tubing, in particular where it's close at hand to the PCBs and everything. It is nice that we're using the extensions for the graphics cards because that does keep it away from the motherboard. So if we do get any drips from condensation, we should be okay. Although kind of like Jay, I'm really hoping that with the AC piping over this, cool dry air is gonna keep the condensation from forming too much in particular drips. And even if it does drip, it should hopefully drip just right down there onto my uh, RTX 3080 box. Maybe I'll put some paper towels down there too. I also think I'm gonna swap to a better supplemental power supply. I've got a Corsair HX1000i here, which is a really solid unit. So that may or may not help out for the second GPU, but we'll give it a shot either way. And I'm also trying to recognize that this might be the last hurrah for me in this competition. I've had a lot of fun so far, but uh, I do not have LN2 capabilities here at home. And I'm 100% sure that that is what Steve and Jay are gonna be moving on to. So uh, let's see what I can do with some iced water cooling, AC assisted. I've got a bunch of setup work to do, so let's get started.
All right, so I think my system, such as it is, is reassembled. The uh, loop has been refilled. I've just been bleeding that. But as you can see, I've gone with sort of a custom design for my air feeder system from the AC over here. I'm trying to direct the airflow as much as I can to feed it up and over the cards with fans positioned to further force the air in and over the uh, vital components, specifically the memory is what I'm gonna be trying to keep cooler. Also tried to upgrade the fans a little bit because uh, you know fan speed is important here. So got Noctua fans over on this side and I'm still going with this Corsair maglev fan over here. So I might still uh, fill in some of this area with some more cardboard or tape or whatever to further force the air over the cards, but I think it's time to see if this is still working and turn it back on. Oh, I didn't plug it in. <laughs> Right now that power supply is just powering the second GPU, these two fans, and the pump. First power supply is still powering everything else. I totally covered up the power button, didn't I? Look where the power button is. It's all the way there. <laughs> I need a chopstick. <laughs> all right, that's easy enough. All right, well, I'm happy to say that the system is still functional. We're back into Windows. So I think I'm gonna do a few system tweaks and maybe swap the memory out. And then it will be time for Hero to, oh, he's bored, but then it will be time to bust these pumps out, get this ice machine going. I'm excited. What am I doing this with my hand? Not a bad change in temperature. AC is now on. GPU temperature is now uh, like zero or one. I should run the test. Test is running. Oh my God, I broke 28,000. Okay, I'm gonna save this right now. Okay, so that was a good run. Uh, getting everything set up took quite a while and kind of as expected, right as I did get to the point where I was actually using the system, testing it, doing a little bit of tweaking, uh, it's time for my daughter to come home. So I need to take a break for now, but uh, I'm gonna come back to this later this evening when it's gonna be cooler uh, and then also maybe I won't have to deal with quite as much of a condensation problem because I'm definitely getting condensation. I did not have time to wrap anything up like I was planning to or anything, but maybe I will have time for that tonight. For now though, I, I improved my score. Thank God this wasn't for nothing. All right guys, it's the next morning and for better or for worse, I need to end this video. So let's talk about where I landed. So my initial run with the ice water cooling setup got me a score of 28,097, which did put me above uh, Taku Ko's Tech Lab score, which I believe was an LN2 setup. And it also put me on top of Gamers Nexus. So I jumped from fifth place up to third place, which is pretty nice. And then I managed to further improve that score by uh, 150 to 200 points, landing at 28,256, which didn't improve my ranking at all. Jay was sitting in the high 28,000s, and then yesterday, as I was setting this all up, he posted a score of 29,737. He does not have a video up on that yet, so I don't know what methods he was using. It seems like he did do some more work with the ice water cooling, uh, so I'm kind of curious to see exactly what went down. Actually, what I'm most curious about is whether or not he is using a custom VBIOS, or whether he was using the stock one because I did this all with the stock VBIOSes and I think that's something that would definitely help me out is if I had one that uh, could unlock the power limits. For my test bed setup I ended up running the uh, 10900K at uh, 5.4 gigahertz max boost on a couple cores. I was just using an offset so it was going between 5 gigahertz on all cores up to 5.4 gigahertz. I did get the Thermaltake Tough RAM memory installed. I had a bit of difficulty getting it to run at 4600 speed. Dialed it all the way back to 4300 to get it running and then I eventually pushed it back to 4400 so that was a nice bump over the 4 thousand speed that I was running with the other kit. Oh, and then I finally remembered to turn hyperthreading off on the 10900K because that is something that can also get you a bit of a higher score if you're running a test like Port Royal that isn't really CPU dependent. Now what I was hoping was going to be my little trick shot, my little ace in the hole or whatever special method was adding salt 
to the water because if any of you have ever made homemade ice cream before you know you gotta salt the ice around the bucket because salt lowers the freezing temperature of water and essentially it means that your water can be colder while still staying water and still uh, flowing through the radiators and everything. I would also like to say that my radiator flow method uh, setup down here was actually working really well too so that's pretty cool. I did notice a difference after adding all that salt in there. I think the uh, lowest temperature dropped down to zero from where it was maybe one or two before so it did impact things a little bit. So I think my airflow tunnel that I set up down here with all the fans on it and everything was uh, fairly effective although still wasn't able to get the memory past about 550 or plus 550 uh, for the memory overclocking. So it does seem like there's some headroom there for overclockers who are going to get uh, full blocks going on there or other solutions like of course LN2. I didn't do quite as much testing as I would have liked to last night though uh, for two main reasons. One was condensation and uh, I was hoping waiting until it was nighttime, ambient temperatures being a little bit cooler would reduce that but I think just the humidity in this area I was getting a lot of condensation on my fittings and I didn't go in there and wrap them or anything like that because after I got all this taped up uh, it's kind of difficult to take apart. Also with it being difficult to take apart made it challenging because I realized one of my blocks definitely has poor contact versus the other. One of my GPUs was maxing out at about 40 degrees Celsius and that is uh, too hot. I mean that's pretty good if you're setting up a water cooling loop and you're running an ambient and you're like oh 40 C that's fine. But when you're running ice through the loop that's not exactly what you want to see. I was getting down to zero when it was at idle but whereas one of my GPUs was hitting around 20 C which I think is about what it should be with the ice loop setup. The other one going to 40 is just indicating that no there's something physically wrong there with the block. So that combined with the kind of Sensation issue made me think like you know I would really need to tear this down and sort of rebuild it to remount that block maybe do something to deal with the condensation but I'm out of time for this video. Now I know and I've known for a while that what's coming next is LN2 cooling and I know that Gamers Nexus and J are both going to be doing that and I know that's an area that I just cannot compete. I managed to scrape together everything to get this ice loop set up but I do not have the means for getting LN2 going especially uh, on short notice. So maybe this is the last year off for me. I did manage to claw my way back into the top Top three multiple times over the course of the past week or so so I'm really proud of that. I'm very proud of the fact that I was able to significantly increase my score with all of this effort and that was definitely a fear of mine for a lot of the time was like oh no what if what if like something drips on one of the GPUs and there's just a fzz and then suddenly I'm dead in the water. But fortunately everything is still working and that does mean that I have a big question for you guys. Now like I said Jay and Steve they're gonna move on to LN2 they're gonna beat my score that's coming no matter what. But would you guys be interested in seeing me try to do one final best case scenario setup with this build. I'd have to tear down stuff, I'd have to remount the GPU thing, I'd have to maybe rebuild it, I maybe could try to see if I could get access to a different VBIOS or something like that. BPS Customs was hitting me up and say, it said that he had some success loading the ASUS Strix VBIOS onto the MSI Gaming X Trio card, but I don't know for sure. I am watching my daughter all day today, so I will do that, and if you guys want to give me some feedback, that was very much appreciated down in the comments section. Let me know if you've been enjoying this overall series, because I certainly have. Shout out to Mad Respects to uh, Jay and Steve for their continued uh, work towards this competition. Even Jay giving me a hard time, you know, I, I can handle that. I can deal with it. It's okay, Jay. I understand. Maybe you could be a little bit more creative with your taunts though from time to time, you know, to give, give, give people something more to chew on than just like, ha, ah, I was better. That's all the time I have for this one though, guys. Thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, if you want to hit the thumbs up button on your way out or hit subscribe, that's always very appreciated. And of course, check out my store at paulshardware.net for shirts, mugs, pint glasses, all of that good merch that you might need in your life. Who knows? Thanks again for watching though, and we'll see you next time.